Idiot rappers who destroy their career in seconds out their failure, but not for the reason you think. And that's because the world of rap has changed drastically in the last 15 years. We're no longer in the age of Biggie Smalls, no, Tupac, Peace and out, Eminem. Bro. We're in the age of 6 9 and Lil Pump. And the baby, this the baby is the first person that comes to mind, man. I'm glad you said that, bro. I don't know. He literally self-sabotaged his whole career drastic change in the culture of rap. Too many artists are now falling victim to the allure of exciting and lavish lifestyles. They stop caring about the art of music and rely on their past success to determine their future. And when fame and fortune become the driving force rather than a genuine passion for music, the fall from grace is always inevitable. But there's so much more to the story. The biggest rappers are surrounded by a web of fake friendships and ulterior motives. The mid rappers turn to NFT scams to bring in the money. And with so many- No way Soldier Boy did that, bruh. Just to earn some dollars? That's low, man. Rappers finding fame from TikTok and Instagram, their instantaneous fame is the epitome of their downfall. Modern rap has a major elephant in the room. Look at the go, man. Look at the go. Authenticity. Now, rappers love to give us a glimpse into an artist's lifestyle in their music videos. They give us a mirage of their life fast cars, stacks of cash, never ending party, surrounding themselves with beautiful women and the promise of an exciting life. And yet, this is never reality. The mm. reality is, the glamorous lifestyle they paint often has more to do with the image than reality. Mm. And when you've got just one hit song, sustaining that illusion becomes quite a challenge and eventually it comes crashing down. A prime example of- Yeah, people be thinking like, if you have a, a hit song, you good, bro. Like, nah, man. <laughs> nah, it takes more, bro. Because they got to keep up their lifestyle. You be forgetting, bro. Like, just because you make millions, their lifestyle also inflates because now they're a rapper type beat. So now they got to carry on with that lifestyle and continue making a lot of money. But if you fall off, it's over. It's grits. This is Lil Xan, who was 22 years old when he uploaded his first song Lil to Zan, SoundCloud. Why he have my After name, getting bro? recognition from both a wide audience and some old school rappers, he'd been taken under the wing of Stat Quo. In 2017, Lil Xan released a single called Betrayed. It quickly became Lil Xan's breakthrough moment, gaining momentum until peaking at 64 on the Billboard 100, just a couple months after its release. People loved the song because of its relatable, deep lyrics and its catchy melody. The song was then certified platinum, a huge achievement for any artist. And since the I single did no so Lil well, Zan, Lil Zan rushed to get his debut album, Total Zanarchy. You kind of look like... Bro, what? What? Hold on. What the hell is this? Kadia? Deep, 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 You know what I'm saying? What? Who is that? Alright, bro. We got people trying to be funny in chat out, but this time it didn't work out as planned. You see, according to Lil Zan, his manager made all the decisions for him. He couldn't even choose which songs would be on the album. And as you may have guessed, the album didn't live up to the hype of his hit song. While Betrayed had over 184 million views on YouTube, almost all the other songs would barely scratch 50 million views. Obviously still very impressive, but Lil Zan still wasn't happy with the reception. Do do the critics weren't face? impressed either, with YouTubers like The Needle Drop saying, It was really ugly, bro. I don't really hate, but like, that man ugly, bro. Total Zanarchy is way too drab to even be dumb fun, with the album receiving bad reviews left, right, and center, and all the messages in the I song seeming to fail. Okay, you, you, you just got through talking about Zans don't do nothing for you, okay? You just wanted to say you had a girl, right, Dragon? You know, FaceTime with this girl, okay? Was the message in that song just like not what I thought it was? It wasn't to sh spread awareness that the drugs don't really help you in the long run. He's just trying to say that, nah, this one don't help, but this one might. But instead of going back to the drawing board and rethinking his process, Lozan blamed his managers and everything else he could think of. And this would become a pattern. According to his manager's stats, Lozan simply didn't care about his upcoming album. He was just doing drugs and having random ass girls come over every night. While his manager would try to connect Lozan with major artists, Lozan regularly failed to even show up to the meetings and interviews. He was still riding on his one success, like it would last forever. And while skipping out on interviews and important events, events that he could have used to grow as an artist, he would instead spend his time taking home women, doing drugs, and generally living on borrowed time. Bro, bro money can really get you artist, emails, he would bro, instead that is crazy. Spend his time like, I ain't gonna lie, why do they look kinda alike though? Yo, 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 chat. They kinda look related, bro. I'm taking home women, doing drugs, and generally living on borrowed time. A common thing with many modern rappers. You look like a 17 year old lesbian, I'm saying. Zan, he bought three separate Los Angeles apartments as well as $130,000 Mercedes Benz G Wagon. All the while, his popularity and recognition was fading as he continued to neglect his career. But what made it much worse was that most of it was bought on credit, meaning he hadn't actually earned the money yet, and the walls were closing in around him. And without a hit album, it was all gonna collapse. His artificial luxury lifestyle used to gain more Whoa! clout. Big bottle Henny, Henny Demon. 
out and bolster his public image was all on borrowed credit. He would continue down this path, wasting more and more time trying to transition to just being an internet celebrity instead of a rapper, constantly filming on Instagram and Twitter all the mundane parts of his life, trying to connect with his audience. Yo, my friend says she, uh, she not a hoe, but she gained a 100k snap score in two days. Yeah, she blonde. Well, without any days. good new music or anything meaningful to say, it didn't work out too well. But it was sort of lost of his failing could be blamed on his addiction issues. On social media, he was vocal about mental health, addiction, and personal struggles. But instead of turning that suffering into art like other artists would, he rested on fading laurels. What audience he did have left was powerless, watching as his mental health declined. And while the G-Wagon was a prized possession for Lil Xan, he'd post a video of how he had a manic episode and keyed his car out of frustration. I want to show y'all what mental illness really fucking looks like. Y'all want to see what that looks like? Yo, have you noticed people with mental illnesses? or claim they have mental illnesses, be bragging about it. Like, bro, you ain't gotta show all this. I just did this to my car. Scratched it, keyed it up, I just bought it. It's like you're flexing your own mental illness, bro. Why? Keyed all the way. Are you proud of that? Lozan also spoke Are you proud of that? through his skateboard at his TV, and the list just goes on. I'm going, I'm going through so much shit. I just found out my dad. I just found out my dad. I just found out my dad is a crackhead. No, stop. I just found out my dad is. Yo, yo stop, stop. I just. Yo, look, they trying to look. They're that really... is not his dad, bro. Really trying to take me off live right now. Father, like son. Yo, nah. His self-destructive tendencies had escaped his own mind. Of course, all of this was costing him a lot of money, money that he didn't have. And the fall would continue greatly, as in July 2019, at a 7-Eleven parking lot, Lozan pulled out a pistol and pointed it at somebody with his finger over the trigger. The man had approached Lozan and confronted him for calling Tupac's music boring. And while Lozan's reaction was met with backlash, Zan addressed the incident on social media shortly after. I was about to be attacked and resorted to having to use self-defense. Call you old bitches still talking about that two-pack sh live your own life he wrote and stop picking on a kid showing how big his ego had gotten on borrowed credit and it didn't stop there lozan would post a series of instagram stories claiming he was hospitalized due to a hot cheeto overdose of all things lozan claimed it ripped something in my stomach open hot cheetos not gonna lie them hot cheetos be hitting bruh but that's a skill issue, man. Now, obviously, everyone questioned the authenticity of his claims, with most saying he did this for some clouds. Lozan made a joke of the overdose later on, but it was clearly a way to hide his real addiction issues. I mean, it's not surprising that someone who named themselves after Xanax would have a problem with it. But as time went on, it got worse and worse. Lozan was popping them constantly while on tour, toxifying his physical, mental, and financial health. But instead of blaming himself, his ego blindsided him, blaming his manager Stat Quo instead for forcing him to take the drugs, which seems pretty unlikely. And when when Lil Xan's biggest inspiration, Mac Miller, died from an overdose, Lil Xan would eventually go to rehab. And whilst Lil Xan checked into rehab on his own, taking care of his drug habit. Yo, this fit is not it, boy. But to mental health, this then further pushed his career into a corner. Lil Xan's Who money. Who is this baddie? And why he with? Why she with him? And fell away. And, not and me. he even had to give up his G wagon because he couldn't afford to pay the thirty thousand dollars he still owed. Off brand Post Malone. Post Malone, if he didn't make it right. And while Lil Xan has been releasing more music, it hasn't really hit the same. Owing to his problems and his attitude, he missed his shot at a good long career, and he's been trying to bounce back ever since. Nah, but how he'll manage like this is another tweak. story entirely. Whilst rapping about that kind of life might work, actually living it can put the brakes on your whole career. Something Lil Xan found out the hard way. Rap and hip hop have always been materialistic. The gold chains and diamond watches definitely aren't a new thing. But as the genres evolved, it became something else entirely. Every kid with a thousand hits on SoundCloud is almost obligated to make it look like the Jeff Bezos in disguise. Yeah, Money equals true. success. So clearly looking richer and having a larger golden chain makes you more successful than the next guy. At first, this worked well for rappers, but over time, the lifestyle has got so much more demanding that it's completely out of reach for anyone without a nine figure bank account. Today and it makes you broke. Y'all falling for the trap, man. Make your money, but you ain't got to flash it like this. You ain't got to flaunt it, man. Hey, more rappers are following MC Hammer's footsteps than Jay-Z's, buying a mansion today only to lose it tomorrow. And as we saw with Lil Xan, faking it until you make it only works when you can actually make it. A quick explosion of success doesn't guarantee it will keep going forever, despite how it might feel. And knowing this, it's no That's surprise real. why the rapper behind the song Whoopty failed. Yo, Whoopty, bitch, man, a movie. Yeah, it's it's grace for this man. I haven't seen him since. <laughs>
is that song. Two. And while CJ didn't throw everything he had into a lavish Biggest lifestyle, follower. he didn't understand the rap world. He used his family to get to the top and suddenly stopped. The reality is that rap is evolving, and to be one of the greats, you need to do something different. You yeah, see, one of the exciting good, parts bro. of the evolution of rap is that anybody can hit stardom because of a simple TikTok dance. Yo, this is... I don't care, man. This is the right here, bro. What the hell? Yo, her tags go hard, though. But to become anything back in the day, you had to make your name known. And the only way people would listen to your music is by word of mouth, not a random app. So those who made it big had a loyal fan base. But it wasn't always easy to gain the loyal fan base. But these days, people are sitting around waiting for a rapper they barely know to drop an album. And in order to do that today, you have to grind. But then you get rappers like CJ, when nothing about what he did as a rapper was a grind. You see CJ's rise to fame in early 2021 with his hit track Whoopty was nothing short of meteoric. The song quickly became an anthem, and CJ's gritty lyrics and energetic flow- And then he, then he claimed like he was rapping a uh, blood that he wasn't even a part of. Like, that's also another thing. Why are you trying to rap games you're not with, bro? Brought him to the forefront of the rap scene. But while his rise to fame came overnight, his decline did too. CJ was a Staten Island native who was a nobody, at least from the rap world's perspective. CJ started making music when he was about nine years old, and he would record and upload songs to YouTube and SoundCloud at the age of 14. While his passion for music wasn't something he made a career out of, CJ was lucky enough to have some big connections in the industry. CJ's uncle and manager James Cruz is a well established executive in the music business, with a track record of working with major artists and record labels. Oh, he had James a played a significant role in the careers of artists like Diddy, 50 Cent, Nicki Minaj, French Montana, and Rick Ross. James Cruz was well connected, and his nephew wanted to become an artist, so he was happy to take CJ under his wing and help him start up a solid career. So while the song whipped, he felt like he came out of nowhere, CJ's fame wasn't out of pure luck. Before creating the song that made him famous, CJ's music was primarily in the hip-hop and rap field. Using connections with his uncle, CJ even had a song called Pop, which featured 6 9 Just like all his other songs until this point, it didn't gain much traction. But eventually, Eventually, when he released the song Whoopty, inspired by the success of other New York drill artists, his life would take a drastic turn. And that's when that big got almost half a billion views. Wow, I didn't know it was that big though. That is crazy. CJ would give drill rap a shot. Not only did he have a voice for it, but he also grew up in the same place as Pop Smoke, making it easy for CJ to grab some attention. That coupled with Pop Smoke's unfortunate murder when there was a gap in the field. So CJ embraced the drill style and created a track with an infectious beat and catchy hook. The song gained massive popularity through a viral TikTok dance challenge and received a significant cosign from Cardi B, a prominent New York rapper. These factors combined with radio play and DJ support propelled Whoopty to become an anthem on the streets and airwaves. Everything was looking up. Up. And by 2021, CJ signed his first record deal using his uncle's connections to Warner Records, one of the biggest record labels about, giving CJ the opportunity to market the song the right way. And slowly, the listeners came in. With the song eventually reaching number 10 on the US Billboard Hot 100 chart in February 2021, and now has over 450 million views on YouTube. Eesh. But CJ's rise to fame quickly came with controversy, starting by simply using the term whoopty. You see, whoopty was a term used primarily by the notorious New York Blood Gang. Mm. It was a gang calling a way for members to greet each other. And although CJ is seen wearing New York Blood Gang clothing items in his video, that boy not one of them. He not one of them. And using their calling, he's never even come close to being involved with them. And so as the song became popular, the gang members were frustrated. Who was this boy from Brooklyn using their words, acting like he was part of them? They said he was stealing their words, and so CJ received threats for it. But CJ denied trying to steal the word. This happened to be a lie, since CJ allegedly tried to trademark the word Whoopty in October 2020, digging a hole deeper for himself. Nonetheless, CJ would release his debut album in 2021, Loyalty Over Royalty. The album was fully backed by Warner Music, and they even connected CJ with French right? Montana to help produce the album. Now, whilst most of the songs didn't do very well, one song did stand out, Bob. It didn't reach the same success, but it still received over 20 million views. It's more than enough for a somewhat aspiring artist, but kind of not what you'd expect from somebody who just released music with over 450 million views. Perhaps CJ got ahead of himself as- Oh, and the reason this one actually took off, this is the one where like, there was a female twerking. I think it was this one, and it looked like it was him twerking, bro, because they're wearing the same type of jacket. It was hilarious. You can see him wearing expensive watches and driving a Rolls Royce, showing off his almost certainly fake lavish lifestyle. But everything about CJ was fake. His way of rising to the top all came from his connections with his uncle. Or while CJ claimed to catch fame like other SoundCloud rappers, his being in the gang was fake. His yeah, buying all these literally the definition of an industry plan, bro. Cars was fake. And although his most famous song was a drill rap song, nothing else he'd make could live up to the hype. He'd been called an industry plant because he never had to earn his way up. He had all the tools handed to him by his uncle. So CJ 
split from Warner Records shortly after its release due to quote, creative differences. And although he'd create more music, he'd move away from the drill rap scene that made him famous. Clearly fans of his Whoopty song no longer resonated with the music and didn't give him a second chance. Then in 2020, CJ just stopped making music. He stopped going to shows and pretty much disappeared. Why did this aspiring artist, with all this potential laid out in front of him, just suddenly disappear off the map? Well, a year later, his fan base would finally find out. CJ took a hiatus from his music career primarily to focus on personal matters, particularly his family and being father to a child. On his return, he explained on Twitter, I took a year off to raise my son and be a father. To me, that's gangster. The announcement of his Yo, return- Dragon getting some pum. Um, came with a new single called Gangster that's received almost no attention. CJ had just turned 180 degrees on his fan base, ignoring them for a year to raise a child, whilst also still putting on his fake persona as a gangster. But you see, the issue with the rap world is that having a child in the gangster rap industry is that this completely goes against the value systems of this culture. While CJ always associated himself with a tough, street oriented image, rapping about crime and violence, he was following the culture of the rap industry. But as soon as he started acting against this, building a family, starting a new happy life, was completely against his core ideology. So by becoming this parent who took a year's break, CJ had just proved his claims of being a gangster were all fake. And so what are you saying gangsters can't have kids? Man. I'm not saying he's a gangster, but obviously he's a fake. So his public perception as a hardcore streetwise figure was destroyed, and many of his fans were attracted to the artist's rebellious and edgy persona. And so seeing them as a responsible, loving parent doesn't really align with their expectations of the rap industry. And this could be seen by CJ's fans' reactions on social media. And that's why CJ's song Fake Gangster, Gangster received the most job, no attention. After four months, the song has less than 300,000 views. In a fast-paced and competitive industry, you need to do a lot of things to keep the fans from fading. You have to be constantly active, maintain an image, and you need to keep the music coming. And CJ failed in all of these areas and his career as a rapper was failing too. Because the value system of the rap industry is completely against that of how- Why he look like Fousey from Walmart? Oh my God, you mean Fousey tube? I don't see it, bro a family. But it wasn't just this. Back in the day when a rapper rose to fame, he had to earn his way there. And CJ simply didn't take those steps. But what was possibly more detrimental to his career was that CJ lacked Yo, respect. Peace out, elite. And this can also be said about Lil Pump, who has a song with over 1 billion views on YouTube, yet has no relevance in 2023. Lil Pump's rise to fame good came night, out of night. nowhere. He oh, buzzed Lil Pump, man. Oof. We, saw, we all saw this coming though, like this is not a shocker. The music scene in 2016 with the song Elementary, and quickly became a leading You'll figure in the vid? SoundCloud Yo, Dragon, you dirty dog. This man is going to link a girl. He's saying he's going to send me a vid. Rap movement. Although his career basically started by sitting on the back of Smoke Pup's career, he captured many of Smoke Pup's listeners as the wild dude in his songs and videos. In fact, from the moment he started making videos, Gucci Gang, no Gucci Gang, Gucci Gang, Gucci Gang, Gucci Gang, Gucci Gang, Gucci Gang. This clearly resonated with fans who were drawn to his nonchalant, pump it up attitude. And despite not having much experience in the game, Lil Pump's music garnered millions of listeners. He started going to different shows and made some more collaborations. These played a significant role in his rise to fame. His work with artists like Smoke Pup and XX Tentacion helped expand his reach and solidify his presence in the music scene. But a real turning point came with Gucci Gang. This track became a sensation, spreading like wildfire. Dero, 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 Dero. Yo, this era of SoundCloud rap is actually unmatched though. You have to give it like, this is our own historical era, man, of just repeating nonsense. Its repetitiveness and addictive nature made it a cultural phenomenon, and Lil Pump was suddenly a household name. Beyond the music, Lil Pump's unique image, complete with vibrant dreads and face tattoos, made him stand Wait, out. did Lil Pump come before Takeshi 6 ix 9 I don't know who came first, bro, because they kind of copycats me. He had some more hits alongside Gucci Gang, like D-Rose and Boss, all of which went viral on SoundCloud, YouTube, and TikTok. But something Lil Pump loved to do was be extravagant on camera. In live streams, he'd throw a TV into the pool, wreck hotel rooms, do drugs, and get wasted. And while this character was unconventional, it's what his fans loved. And with so much hype and fame, Lil Pump signed a deal with Warner Records. This was all before he was even 17 years old. But taking on the persona of the- you be forgetting, this man is literally my age, bro. Wow. Bad boy who did what he wanted and when he wanted, led him to make headlines for all the wrong reasons. Six, nine, in February 2018, first. Lil Pump was arrested for discharging a weapon and firing it without right. a cause. According to Lil Pump at the time, three individuals had tried to break into his home and fired at the door. When questioned by the police, Lil Pump claimed he had been smoking weed and the cops didn't buy a story about intruders, sparking an investigation. A few hours later, the police returned to his apartment with a search warrant. And during the search, they discovered an unloaded handgun outside in the bushes and later located ammunition for the gun inside the apartment. They also found that the bullet was shot from inside the house, not from the outside, as Lil Pump claimed. The police also found large amounts of marijuana in the house. As a result of these findings, Lil Pump was arrested for discharging a weapon in a place where people live. Lil Pump's mother was put under investigation for endangering a minor due to the presence of an unsecured gun in their home. And because Lil Pump was under the age of 18, he was sent to juvenile detention, meaning he had to take a moment out of the limelight. But he oh, all this before the age of 18 is wild, man. 
just a kid. He wasn't done hurting his career just yet. Despite only joining the rap scene for less than a year, Lil Pump was already damaging his reputation and disrespecting the rap game. Clearly, his fame started getting to his head, after Gucci Gang's rise to the top. In April 2018, rapper Lil Pump and Smoke Pub teased a song titled Fuck J. Cole. And so J. Cole Damn. would respond, taking a shot at these SoundCloud rappers. What's the beef with J. Cole? Oh, it's because J. Cole did start the mumble rap. Yeah, I remember. Track 1985. Now, if you don't already know, J. Cole has been in the rap scene since 2007 and is very well respected. Although he didn't mention Lil Pump by name, it left strong hints that it was directed at him. All these niggas popping now is young. Everybody say the music that they make it dumb. I remember I was 18. Money, pussy, party, I was on the same thing. You gotta give a boy a chance to grow some. And J. Cole pretty much called out Lil Pump and other SoundCloud rappers for blowing everything they make, putting on a show as it will never end, making the call that their fame was never gonna last. So Lil Pump reacted to the song live. And it's true, man. Yo, J. Cole seen the downfall, bro, before it even happened. Live on Instagram saying, Wow, you get so much props. You just a 17 year old. <laughs> <laughs> Lame ass jit. And J. Cole would mention that he wasn't aiming this directly at Lil Pump. That's such a teen response, man. Like, <laughs> it was more of an if the shoe fits so the song. But the beef escalated with Lil Pump fans chanting fuck J. Cole and J. Cole fans chanting fuck Lil Pump. <laughs> About a month later, of their fans fighting each other online, J. Cole and Lil Pump sat down for an hour long interview after Rolling Loud. Ah, Instead of biting in each other's throats, the two worked things out, though J. Cole's prophecy of Lil Pump's fate as a rapper would come true not so long after. From here, it was almost as if he had grown man to ability to like put everything to the side and you know, just you know, make up and stuff. You know what I'm saying? See how fast he could destroy his career. Bro, last like a Kleenex bottle. I, I don't know. I, I think we already know this, bro. All right, hop off my meat, please. Thank you. Can I laugh, please? Can I be me? Thank you. As he sparked controversies consistently, he was called racist for referring to Asian people. Chongs, although he apologized for this and changed the lyrics, as being dubbed a racist won't get you anywhere in the rap game. And so by the time he released his album Harvard Dropout, the excitement over Lil Pump had dwindled, and none of the tracks went viral. The problem now is that he's just gotten boring, he's effectively painted himself into a corner, and has kind of run out of ideas and has no choice left but to just make his music sound slicker and more expensive. And surely that's going to appeal to some people, but to anyone who enjoyed the debut tape for its raw energy and almost punkish attitude on Harvard dropout, yeah, that's completely gone. Throughout 2019, Lil Pump dropped a few more tracks, none gaining any traction once again. He also met up and endorsed Donald Trump, even showing up to Trump rallies where Trump misnamed Lil Pump. The world, little pimp. Nah, I can't lie, Trump is smart though. He was dealing with all the rappers, like, <laughs> he, he freed, who did he free? I think he held 21 Savage, who was the other person? Kodak, Kodak, Lil Pump. Yeah, he was getting on all their sides, man. Having all their fans vote for Trump. For in the rap game, he was now aligning himself with a conservative leader, going completely against the rap culture. So even more of his fans stopped caring about him. And so by 2020, Lil Pump effectively had no attention. He'd wasted almost all of his money from his deals, and things weren't looking up for him. This led to Lil Pump announcing his retirement on Twitter. Hey, you want to talk about me? I'm all right. right. I'm finna go be an astronaut. Bye. Though everybody knew he was only making a claim for clout and didn't mean it. While Pump thought he was a household name like Eminem, he was slowly turning into an artist that nobody like cared about. Eminem is Lil crazy. Pump was oblivious to this and made a fatal mistake. In December 2021, Lil Pump and rapper Ronnie J released Yo, a surprise them glasses, album called boy. No Name. They didn't advertise it, hoping it would take off and excite their fan base. But despite having a song with over 1 billion views on YouTube, Lil Pump didn't have a following anymore. His fans weren't waiting for him to release new music, and the album flopped with only one of the songs reaching a million plays on Spotify. That bad? Oh nah. When questioned whether J. Cole was right about his fame and career fading away, Lil Pump said J. Cole was still wrong. Do you feel like he predicted kind of like what ended up happening with your rap career? Nope. No. Because I'm still here. Although he tried to regain attention in 2022 by promising the release of Lil Pump 2, things just weren't looking good. And so he announced that he allegedly lost his hard drive to Lil Pump 2. Yet pretty much nobody bought that excuse or even cared about it. Guys. I lost my hard drive to LP2. I lost it in the middle of a lake. I can't find it. Can you please help me find it? Please help me, please! And although Lil Pump has released some music just a month ago, his top song has under 250,000 views and doesn't seem to be grabbing anyone's attention. Lil Pump didn't work his way up and he's lasted longer than others who rose with him, but he's clearly at the end of his overhyped career 
and while Lil Pump was completely oblivious to his downfall, the next rapper was perhaps too f The final boss, man. Now this man really did it to himself. ...focused Crazy. on his downfall. Unlike the other rappers on this list, DaBaby was aware so, of what so would and wouldn't hurt his career. But being too self-aware has turned DaBaby into a failure of a rapper and a meme. Memes about you. Let's go. Jonathan Lindale Kirk, aka DaBaby, worked his way to the top of the rap field, releasing albums regularly and putting in the hard work like those before him. He took a lot of inspiration from Eminem, 50 Cent and Lil Wayne, and he started making music that had a message behind it. But it wasn't always smooth sailing. DaBaby made a career doing what he calls quote, street activities, which is basically being a gang member, a thug and selling drugs for a living. By the age of 21, he had already gained a vast amount of money and built his way up in the gang world. Being raised in the streets, the baby related to a lot of old school rap music. And this made him want to make a few songs of his own. Yo, Charles so the baby he sold a bag. Apparently he like, bro, when he said what he said about uh, gays and stuff, like bro, apparently he, all his tours that he booked, they all released them. And like, that was like, apparently it was like 30 million worth of shows, bro. I don't know, something like that. But that's crazy. He used to be my go. I think, bro, back then, he used to be everybody's go. He was definitely my go too. Not my go go, but like he was up there, man. Like how I see, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, he was up there for sure. Tapes back in now I look back and cringe. And 10 mixtapes later in 2016. And with his song Light Show taking off, this gave him a huge boost in his career. Back then, he called himself Baby Jesus, but eventually changed it to the more appropriate Da Baby. But to release 10 mixtapes and only have one hit isn't exactly a solid track record. But it's more relevant again for making new weird music. Yeah, he's gonna find any way to come back now, right? What made the baby unique? He was able to find what worked and what didn't and adapt to a sound that people started to enjoy. And over the years, he started to gain a bit of traction, showing up at every show possible and working on a social media presence. Embracing his name, you could find- Nah, this is <laughs> This is wild, bro. This is a gangster, by the way. This is a, he's from the streets, bro. This is a gangster. A hoodlum, a thug. Many videos of the rapper wearing nothing but a diaper. This was marketing genius, and it worked because his debut album, Baby on Baby, would eventually sell over 120,000 copies in just its first week alone. And the single Suge yeah, reached world. number seven on the US Billboard Hot 100. As soon as he got that song with Dua Lipa, I knew it was over. He went pop stream, he went mainstream. And and he made a song collab with, uh, what's his face? The one that made uh, ee -er. Roddy Ridge back in his prime. Oof, they were on top of the world. A year later, he released Rockstar, which spent seven weeks sitting at number one on the Billboard Hot 100. Clear. And for a moment in his career, he was the most streamed artist on Spotify. Needless to say, this was monumental success. It was. And over the years, DaBaby would become a decorated rapper with a long list of awards and Grammy nominees. But along with the success, there were many controversies pushing DaBaby Bro, off the really edge of the Bro, he really had it. Board. Notably in November oh. 2019, while DaBaby was shopping at Walmart, two men approached and- And he was beating up in the store, bro. I mess with Lil Baby. I be the baby. I still mess with him, bro. It's just music, not that. It didn't hold up over time, bro started aggravating DaBaby. Now what actually went down in the moment is a bit complicated, but a few moments later, and DaBaby would pull out a pistol and shoot he one of the men on in the gun. The man bled out and died that evening. But interestingly enough, this didn't set his career back that much. In fact, this happened shortly before the height of his career as a rapper. Probably because shooting people and being a ruthless murderer is what the rap world's all about. Right? That's the culture, Crazy, right? and people like the authentic aggressive style behind it. But this wouldn't be his only criminal incident. In May 2020, DaBaby was arrested for robbery. But this time, it wasn't cool. A multi-millionaire beat up and robbed a concert promoter- Bear in mind, bro. Everything he's doing is very wrong. But none of this canceled him, bro. None of this. Look, just watch, bro. Miami. Watch what got the promoter it. shorted DaBaby Don't do this. You can do this. You can rob, steal, kill. But don't, don't diss the gays, bro. Don't do that. And so DaBaby stole his money, LGBTQ, a valuable don't camera, do that, bro. and other belongings. All of this was captured on camera. And as a result, the baby was detained and subsequently questioned by the police. And this would just be one of many assault charges laid against the baby. But it was moments like this that would start to ruin his image. Why would he do this? He's at the top of Spotify, going completely viral. Memes of him everywhere, and yet he's still. <laughs> I remember that meme, bro. It was so stupid. Control his anger. This time, the rap industry would wince. And then in the same year. The baby slapped one of his own fans, trying to just get a picture. After this, he would finally get flack, 
And so the baby would come to Instagram with his fans pouring hatred towards his way. And although him turning to Instagram was just trying to keep up his image, it seemed to only damage yeah, it more. Yeah, Afro, this is LGBT is like asking to be canceled. Yeah, it is. You're you're literally asking. You're like, yeah, please cancel me, please. I apologize. You know, I do. I'm very sorry that there was a female on the other end of that flashlight on that phone. But you know, keep in mind. I couldn't see you because you got the flash this close to me, which is okay. It's no problem. A lot of people did. They didn't put it as close as you put it, but a lot of people had flash in me, and that's okay. You know, that's that's what I signed up for. That's the risk I take when coming to, you know, put on the show for my fans. Bro, why are you trying to riz up his fans, bro? <laughs> Talking mad. Yeah, man. That's how you talk to a girl when you're trying to seduce her. By addressing the controversy, he only brought more attention to the situation. A fatal mistake the baby would make time and time again, and it's probably one of the biggest factors towards his failure, addressing the issue in the first place. But it wasn't just that. The lack of disrespect for his fans, the culture, and being an aggressive thug starts to become unpleasant even for those in the rap world. And then a year later in one of his music videos, he would hold up a picture of Jojo Siwa. Yeah, this this was so uncalled for, but it was fire though. Damn, Jojo Siwa, what? A kid made YouTuber no sense made some me, crazy damn. comments, which was just weird. A well-respected rapper with a proper gangster history was now starting beef for the star who makes videos for children. This was met with a lot of backlash, and once so again, the baby addressed it on social media, apologizing. Again, bringing more attention to this ridiculous situation. But it only got worse from there. In 2020, the baby was then captured trying to kiss a fan who was rejecting him. In the video, he was clearly intoxicated, and even once she pushed him away. So he would try again, oh, no. making himself look more and more desperate. Not a tough, stoic gangster like he made out to be. Ah, yeah, well, I ain't rocking with that one though. What the? Was his solution going back to Instagram to try and defend himself? But his image was slipping fast by this point, and things would just keep getting worse and worse for the baby, who shot another man in the leg after he was caught trespassing on the baby's property. Any police say the man who was shot did not live at the home and he was not welcome here. Now, police also telling us that the only two other people who were at the home at the time of the shooting were the baby and another person. Then a week the later, the baby was caught sucker punching one of the artists who was trying to help name. Wisdom. Yo, his, you can talk anything about the baby, but you can't say he don't stand on business, though. His image was on the decline, but one situation would affect his career above all else. In August Bro, 2020, like the baby would make homophobic Michael, remarks baby. on stage and hate on those who have HIV. This was the nail in the coffin, as over the next few weeks, well-respected celebrities would call him out and disgrace the rapper for making these comments. People like Madonna, Elton John, Dua Lipa, and Demi Lovato. More the baby apologized this is the to the stupidest thing he could have done, and he should have known. He should have known, bro. See, when you're on top of the, when you're on cloud nine, you just think nothing can bring me down till it brings you down. Those who were offended by the comments, most of it is only another sun. PR stunt. The apology didn't cut it anymore. So he would stream another video on Instagram, but it just felt half-hearted. What me and my fans do at the live show. It he does the same apology video. When he wakes up in the morning. Hey man, it was just an apology. <laughs> it don't concern you on the internet or you bit of on the internet it's not y'all business you know what i'm saying like what i do at a live show is for the audience at the live show it'll never translate correctly to somebody looking at a little five six seven kind of in up interviews following the instant it was still clear he wasn't truly sorry for his comments and it was this moment on stage that was what finally destroyed his career according to the baby he had 30 million dollars yeah 30 30 mil bag so that's you are done I ain't gonna lie, straight buffoon. It's worth the show schedules that were cancelled. It had a deal with Burger King that was cancelled and a sponsors with Boohoo Man pulled out. The baby even had to cancel one of his own shows as the venue had seating for 14,000 people, but yet only 500 tickets were actually sold. Eventually, his album released in September 2022, Baby on Baby 2, but only saw 16,000 sales in the first week, 87% less than his first debut album. And while he can still make a modest living off of his music, he's clearly destroyed his career. I don't want to be him, bro. I ain't gonna lie, man. How you fumble the bag like that, bro?